Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to be making potassium perchlorate, starting from sodium chloride. Into 1,200 milliliters of water, there was added approximately 300 grams of sodium chloride. Into a jacketed reaction flask, the jacket isn't truly necessary, but I like to do this because it keeps the electrolyte from coming to a boil. Using a power supply of 6.5 volts and 20 amperes, this is going to require about 60 hours. But we should probably let it run for about 65 to 70 just to be sure all of the conversion. Using a size 16 rubber stopper, what holds in the rubber stopper is a titanium mesh to serve as the cathode. And for the anode, I'm using a titanium substrate lead dioxide anode. And we will come back in about 65 hours and we will see the result. Here we are approaching approximately 72 hours later. I reacted a sample of the electrolyte with a methylene blue, 1% methylene blue solution. The precipitate, the precipitate and the violet color strongly indicates that perchlorate is present in the cell. We're going to let it run for a little longer just to ensure the complete conversion. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, this cooling jacket on the outside, a continuous stream of water is not ran through it and it's only there to act as a buffer. The solution was transferred into a large size Buchner funnel. It is now ready for vacuum filtration to remove the insoluble lead dioxide particles. After filtration, this is the result. A clear solution of mostly sodium perchlorate. To give you a closer look at the anode, this is the titanium substrate lead dioxide anode. And as you can see, even after 72 hours, well, around 75, the anode really looks pretty good. It's not even really touched. Using a hot plate, bring the electrolyte to a boil. This will destroy any remaining sodium hypochlorite in solution. Although there are small amounts, it's still necessary to do. After boiling for about 45 minutes, the next step is to prepare a saturated solution of potassium chloride. Using a hot plate, heat the solution to help with the solubility of the potassium chloride. Once a supersaturated solution has been obtained, dump it into the sodium perchlorate solution. After dumping it in, the immediate precipitate strongly indicates that this is potassium perchlorate. We're going to allow the solution to cool to room temperature. It is probably recommended that you stir it just to ensure the exchange of ions between the potassium chloride and the sodium perchlorate. The potassium perchlorate is then filtered from the solution using the Buchner funnel. using a vacuum pump, of course. 
The potassium perchlorate is now washed again with cold water to remove any residual potassium chloride. From vacuum drying and allowing it to dry in the sun, most of the water evaporated. Now just to conclude that this is potassium perchlorate, I mixed some of the potassium perchlorate with water and shook it vigorously to dissolve a small amount. The violet precipitate in color indicates that this is potassium perchlorate. 